Okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, so we are going to look at Sutra 115 today. Um, and for reference, where we are in this kind of journey through the Yoga Sutras, um, last week we talked about how um, the mental modifications that are part of being human um, can be restrained by two things. One is practice um, for a long time in all earnestness. And um, the second way to do it is through non-attachment, which is called vairagya in the language of yoga. Um, and this sutra today is really about vairagya. So we're looking at the second way. I'm going to read the English version of the sutra from our book. If you don't have the book, no worries. Um, it says, the consciousness of self-mastery in one who is free from craving for objects seen or heard about is non-attachment. The consciousness of self-mastery is non-attachment. And specifically in one who is free from craving for objects seen or heard about. When I read this, um, one of the things that comes to mind immediately, even before reading kind of the teaching from Swami Satchidananda, is the object seen or heard about. Um, I think for us, that, those of us that live in the 21st century, which is everybody here, <laughs> um, this is especially hard because we're delivered a lot of things, a lot more information than um, historically has been available um, and pushed at human beings. So we live in a world of media um, exposure. And so it's, it's really seeing and hearing um, whether it's um, podcasts or television or um, Zoom learning or whatever it is, there's all this stuff that we see and we hear specifically um, that's constantly trying to create attachment. All right, so um, advertising is 100% based on this. Like if you expose us to um, a product or a service, and you trigger the parts of our brain that are susceptible to craving, then we're gonna buy it. Um, it's kind of how our culture works. Um, so how do we deal with that is really um, part of our journey through this human life that we've got. Um, we can get drawn into that and spend our life chasing all the things, or we can find ways to um, diminish, I'll say. We're not going to be free from craving. Swami Satchinanda says that pretty clearly in his teaching. We're not going to be 100% free, at least not um, for a long time and a lot of practice. So how do we start to work with this craving that our culture basically <laughs> has mastered in terms of creating in us? Um, and um, in my own experience, one of the ways um, that I've made some improvement in this area is um, by being very careful about what I allow in. Um, I took a news fast um, probably 20 years ago. And um, before that, I was pretty addicted to just keeping up with what was going on every single day. Um, and of course, our major media outlets use advertising to fund themselves. And so in, in trying to get the information, I was also exposing myself to lots of things. Um, so there's kind of practical things that we can do to limit our exposure, what we read, what we watch, what we listen to now, podcasts and the advertisements on podcasts are a big thing. Um, so that's one aspect of it. Um, and the book that I was reading at the time that suggested the news fast was really like a wake up moment for me. I was like, oh, I never even thought about that. Like, oh, I have a choice. 
Um, and I think that's what all of these practices that we're doing are inviting us into, is to wake up and then start to make better choices. Um, so that's a part of it. Um, there's so much in this word vairagya, which is the word for non-attachment. Um, and there's a few things that I want to point out from our reading, whether or not you have the book or not. I think he has um, some really wonderful things to say to kind of work with a little bit. Um, the first one I want to bring to our attention is, he says, non-attachment should not be misunderstood to be indifference. Um, and I think for a lot of us, um, when we hear about non-attachment and we think it means indifference, well, from my own experience, we're like, well, I don't really want to live a gray life. <laughs> like, I don't want to um, experience the world constantly without any um, joy. I think we equate desire with joy. Um, and as I've worked with this teaching over the years and different teachers helping me to understand this, um, my experience has been there's, there's sort of two levels of this. Um, the supreme vairagya that the Yoga Sutras teach us about, there's actually a, um, a possibility of not having attachment to things or people or um, all of the things that can cause suffering when they are taken away. Um, and then I think there's also a more practical day-to-day -day lev living level of non-attachment where we're less, um, I don't want to use the same word, but we're less um, held by those desires and we can free ourselves from um, craving. Um, and the practice to get there is awareness. So if we're not aware that we're stuck, we're not aware that we're attached to something, um, we're just in it. And once we start to wake up to, oh, <laughs> like, I'm pretty attached to that, um, what's behind that, then we can start to work with it and have some agency in what's happening in our day-to-day -day life. And that's where I think um, meditation comes in, right? It's ab around building awareness um, from a place of stillness where we can observe how our cravings affect us. And then if we do it in these situations where we're sitting and we're kind of in a sacred time and space and we develop a habit, then when we're out there and it's happening in real time, um, we have those resources to draw on and be like, oh, haha, ha. here I am in Ace Hardware. I came to buy, um, you know, a tool, and all of a sudden I'm in the clothing department <laughs> looking at all the cute things that I don't need. <laughs> and I can laugh and be like, oh, yeah, there it is, craving. Right? I didn't even know I needed that thing, and here I am like, oh, this would be really nice to have. <laughs> oh. So, um, before we begin, there's so many little gems in this chapter. Did anybody else have a part of this that they read? If you're, if you do have a copy of the book, where you're like, okay, wow, that was like a big light bulb for me. I have. Oh, Mary, were you going to say something? Yes, ma'am. I had the idea that. The more you serve, the more happiness you enjoy. The idea that if you give to others, it brings that, you know, happiness to you. So I, I like that one. Me too. That's why I love teaching yoga. <laughs> Robert knows. Yeah. Yeah, you don't sell yoga, you just teach for your own joy. Well, I do both because I live in the <laughs> world. Um, but I do have those moments on a regular basis where I'm like, should I just make the whole studio a donation-based studio? And then I have those moments where I'm like, well, you need to I, do pay have, I do have rent to pay. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a balance between, you know, 
your regular cost and then the, you've got donation based in there too. So you're covering all of that. Yeah, I'm doing my best to live in this capitalist world and also make what we do available to people that want it, but can't necessarily afford to pay my rent. <laughs> <laughs> There's one more um, sentence on page 27 that I also have underlined. Um, and what's funny to me is when I come back to this book year after year, um, I underline new things, but some of the things are just like, yep, that's the, that's the message I needed to hear. Um, and this one's gonna be a little tricky for us who practice on a regular basis. It says, even the practice of meditation is not done just for your own peace but it is done because with a peaceful mind, you can go out into the world and serve well. Right, so even though it seems like we're meditating for our own inner peace, it actually supports us in serving others, which I think we all know from experience that when we're less cuckoo, we're better to the people around us. Okay. Let's practice. Wherever you are, create your space and your posture. When you're situated, close your eyes. All right, start just checking in physically, feet and seat. Take a full breath. Create your posture so that it's upright, alert and has a relaxed quality as well. I invite you to begin with just anchoring into your breath. Notice the sensation in your body as you breathe in. and out. Today, as a way to work with craving, I'm going to invite you into a practice of strong stillness. So resisting the urge to scratch the itch or move away from discomfort, just allowing yourself to be with whatever arises and just being with it.
you notice your mind wandering down a rabbit hole of thoughts that might include some desire or grasping, have a smile and just come back to your breath. When a distraction comes up, even just my voice, notice the reaction and if there's any desire for it to be different. Come back to just noticing.
without a desire for anything to be otherwise. In other words, notice any attachment to peace of mind. And release even that attachment. Take a fuller, deeper breath. Do that again one more time. Nice, big breath. And then open your eyes. Insights? 
offerings. I like the idea of creating a peaceful mind. Um, and I, I have to do that over and over because the mind does not stay peaceful for a long time, but I, that goes back to the whole practicing every day. With, I think it was last week when we talked about that. Mm -hmm. I was committed. Yeah, you got to build the samskaras. Meaning the natural tendencies, impressions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, as I was practicing this morning, or just now, um, I smiled in an awareness that... Um, Sometimes I get mad when somebody interrupts my meditation. <laughs> like if my husband wakes up early and I'm drawn into a conversation instead of having my quiet time, that I'm attached to my meditation. <laughs> There's so much irony in that. <laughs> But it's like that, right? Like all the things. Like I'm, don't mess with my peace of mind. <laughs> As if somebody outside of me could be doing that. <laughs> oh, to be human is such an adventure. <laughs> Any other shares before we say goodbye for this week? Yeah, I was going to say something about the so attachment can be good or bad depending upon what it is we're doing so like you were talking about with meditation so like i might be attached to this shirt and decide i don't really like this shirt and if something happens to this shirt i might be out of whack because the shirt got destroyed or whatever and really i don't need this shirt that much it's a shirt but <laughs> some stuff like yoga i'm very attached to yoga and meditation and some of that's good stuff unless i turn it into something bad because I can't do yoga. So now I'm angry at people. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of double-edged kind of sword thing. Yeah. I can't do <laughs> yoga today. So my whole world has collapsed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of these things that are, um, I mean, the word I'll use is defects, like things where we're struggle with, uh, a side of ourselves that might have lots of craving. Like it also gets us something. Um, so there's like a middle place, I think, if we're in the world to work with these things. And, and that's the thing I have to remind myself constantly in this path is that, you know, there's the ideal, live in a cave and have somebody bring me a bowl of rice so I don't have to deal with all the things that are involved in being self-sufficient in the modern world. But I don't. Right, I have to make enough money to buy groceries, so I have to create some desire in somebody to want to do yoga. <laughs> um, yeah, it's hard, but I mean, if we're aware that we're doing it, at least we're awake. And then, you know, I do, I, I'm kind of looking forward to getting older and older because I think as we do get older, we naturally become um, more able to give some of those things up and we're forced to give some things up and it's a natural process. Um, but when we're householders, um, there's a lot of things we have to do that might be in um, opposition to some of these principles that we're trying to cultivate. So, you know, we just do our best. That's the fourth agreement in Don Miguel Ruiz's book. Just do your best. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys joining me. It's a lonely journey if you try and do it by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I hope you have a wonderful Easter, Passover, and Ramadan.